Hello, and welcome to this preview of the Jan-Feb 2022 issue of Limelight. We begin the new year with our bumper holiday issue, and what better place to start than a look at the year ahead? In our cover feature, 2022 Back to Normal, we asked a team of specialist writers, Ian Whitney, Paul Ballamcross, Deborah Jones, Steve Dow, and Jansen J. Antman, to assess the arts programming across the country and across the year, and to tell us what they are most looking forward to. Vikingor Olofsson has been described as revitalizing classical music. His work certainly feels revelatory as he redefines the piano recital and tops the charts. Clive Paget conducts an enthralling interview with the uniquely talented Icelandic pianist. In 2015, Chichi and Wanaku established the Chinake Foundation to provide career opportunities for black and ethnically diverse classical musicians in the UK and Europe. In 2009, Deborah Cheatham, a Yorta Yorta woman, soprano, composer, and educator, founded Short Black Opera to develop indigenous singers in Australia. Cheatham talks with Nwanaku about the similar challenges they have faced to change perceptions and increase diversity in classical music ahead of Chinake Chamber Ensemble's performance at the Adelaide Festival in March. We all know that Leonardo da Vinci was a consummate artist and all-round Renaissance genius, but his love of music and skill as a musician is less well known. Kate Bolton Porciati, a lecturer in music and cultural history in Florence, takes us into the world of Leonardo, the musician who improvised, sang masterfully, and designed bizarre instruments. With his fascinating rhythms, George Gershwin bridged the divide between the concert hall and popular entertainment and no more so than in his orchestral work, An American in Paris, later made into a famous film. Deborah Jones talks to leading classical dance maker Christopher Wheeldon, as well as members of his creative team and dancers, about reuniting ballet and Broadway in his music theatre version of An American in Paris, touring Australia in 2022. Also in this issue, Shamista de Souza interviews Australian soprano Anna Louise Cole, as she prepares to make her role debut as Turandot for Opera Australia. And Laura Biemi interviews West Australian-based composer Olivia Davies about her new work, In Waves, which has its world premiere at Perth Festival. I look at the reopening of Sydney's Theatre Royal, the campaign to save the Metro Minerva Theatre, and the need for more performance venues in Sydney. In our Cutting Edge column, Daryl Buckley, Artistic Director of the Elysian Ensemble, writes about why he created the Ensemble's performance series on YouTube. In his soapbox, Guy Noble looks at the need to increase the representation of women composers, and suggests that instead of the old saying, behind every great man stands a great woman, the truth is perhaps that in front of every great woman stands a lot of mediocre men. Craig Alistair Young, a cellist with Queensland Symphony Orchestra as well as a composer and cook, answers five questions about the new composition he has written to celebrate QSO's 75th birthday. In this month's Sacred Cow column, Alex Rainery asks why classical music lags so far behind social trends. Jazz legend Sandy Evan discusses the saxophone in our Playing Up column, and Natalie Bassingthwaite, currently starring in the musical Jagged Little Pill, is the subject of our My Music column. Happy reading.